This is the Breast Snodgrass Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me today. I have a guest named Adam Paulson out of the organization called Revel out of Colorado. And we're going to be diving into what Revel is and who Adam Paulson is. Before I talk about Adam, go over to the Breast Snodgrass channel on YouTube and subscribe and also leave a comment that if you enjoy watching videos like this. Uh, today, I go pretty deep with Adam Paulson. He lives in Colorado. He spent his life trying to follow Jesus as honestly and joyfully as possible. He's the co-founder and director of Revel, which is a nonprofit based organization in Colorado that hosts soul care intensives at a ranch in the Colorado mountains. Uh, guys, I went there in December and it is off the charts. If you want intimacy, authenticity uh, with the father and with other men, or they have co-ed retreats, women too, uh, this is the place to go revel. Uh, we dive into that. He's also a worship leader and he has a new album called I Was Sure that talks about some of the pain and loss that he has felt these last uh, few years uh, in his life. So I want to introduce you guys to Adam Polson. What's going on, Adam? Uh, not much, Brett. How are you today? Good to be with you. Yeah, man. I'm uh, really looking forward to this interview. I know we got to spend some time out at the ranch in Colorado that you guys do with Revel in December. Yeah. I know we're going to dive into that today a little bit. Um, love your heart, man. So, so mm. thanks for being with us today. Yeah, it's an honor. It was an honor having you out to the ranch in December and yeah, happy to join you today. Thanks for having me on. Definitely. So I always ask this question. This is a deep one, man. So who is Adam Paulson? Gosh, who is? I mean, how, how much time do you have? <laughs> um, oh gosh, I guess 30,000 foot view, uh, 39 years old, live in Palisade, Colorado. So almost to the Utah border. Um, spent early years in California, family moved to the front range of Colorado. And then now I'm over here on the Western side of the state. So uh, around here, that makes me one of those guys, uh, yeah. <laughs> quote unquote, one of those Californians that moved to Colorado, who then started to fill up the Western part of the state. Um, I have worked with Revel since, um, since it was founded, which um, we've been around for about 13 years now. I was a volunteer for the first couple of years. I was a high school history teacher before doing what I'm doing now which is I direct Revel, this nonprofit that uh, hosts soul care retreats and a couple other things, but that's kind of our bread and butter is soul care retreats for men and women at a ranch uh, in the mountains of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And if you guys, you need to check out the, the website, number one, and just check out the, the ranch. I was out there in December. Mm -hmm. Um just the heart behind it, the beauty of the creation, just the heart of revel, right? Just getting that intimacy with the father, getting intimate with other men and, and women while we're there. Uh, just an amazing experience. And um, so if you guys are listening, mm -hmm. you got to check that out. We're going to spend some time talking about that. But but Adam, uh, you talk about you've spent the majority of your life with Jesus. You're walking with yeah. Jesus, right? And you've been in ministry uh, for for many years now and, and, you know, director of revel. And, uh, you say that you try to follow Jesus honestly and joyfully, right? So yeah, <laughs> want to yeah. dive into that. What has that journey been like for you to, to be in the ministry, to be in the depths of it, to try to follow Christ mm -hmm. honestly and, and joyfully? What is that? Can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, so my, my earliest memories are in the sandbox at Irvine Presbyterian Church in Irvine, California, and literally raised in the church. Um, my mom and dad modeled a life with Jesus, uh, a family that was centered around Jesus, and that's all I've ever really known. Um, I'd like to say now that I've sort of come back around to where I began, uh, but it's been um, a faith that for me now has been tested and interrogated from all kinds of different angles. And often in my life, it's been through just the, the experience of pain and loss and the things that Jesus said we can expect in this life. But very few people are talking about in church, how we do well to walk through them and not, not lose heart, not lose faith. Um, so 
I would say yeah, the majority of my adult life, all of my adult life, really from the time I was 14 and learned to play the guitar, learned to lead worship for a missions trip to war as uh, I'm 39 now. So that was 25 years ago. I've been in front of rooms full of people doing my best to stand there honestly before God and before them and say something or create some kind of experience that would matter for the kingdom. Mm. And um, I mean, I know I'm full of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know I'm, uh, you know, I know I'm a chief among sinners, just like anybody else mm-hmm. out there. So it's, you know, from the time I was 14, I've had to wrestle with that tension of I'm not qualified because I'm perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm qualified because I, I trust the blood of Jesus to cover it all for me. But yet here I am. It's not necessarily my personality to be at the front of the room. I'd much prefer to be in the back or really I would prefer just be hanging out with a couple of friends. I, yeah. I'd rather a small group of people, but for whatever reason, the Lord just sort of tapped me on the shoulder and was like, Hey man, we're going to, we're going to lead some stuff together. So, <laughs> I mean, it's wrestling with who I know I am when no one's looking and, um, and the, the distance between the life I thought I would, would, that God would give me if I checked all the boxes and the life that I that I actually am watching unfold before my eyes, um, you know, I, I think I've come to a much more honest and joyful uh, experience of who God is. But it's come through the loss of uh, my fantasies about who I was or about the life that he owed me because I was doing X, Y and Z for him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I know that you have just come out with an album and it was a lot about your loss, um, <laughs> which I've listened to your album a lot. I was like, oh mm. my gosh, this is raw. It's it's mm. honest. It's um, just the pain and, and you can just hear it coming mm-hmm. through. And uh, that mm-hmm. album I, I've listened to, it's it's about the loss. Can you share a little bit about, um, about this, this journey of the last several years? I know you had... And you even talked about this at the ranch that like walking with Jesus, sometimes we think it's going to be this, this straight line up. Oh, just yeah. give me some blessings and, and more yeah. and more. And then we finally reach heaven. Yeah. And it's, it's not like that. And so mm-hmm. talk about your journey of this walking through some of this pain, this loss. Yeah. Yeah. Just that, that idea that in a, in an affluent Western Christian paradigm, uh, influenced so much by consumerism and capitalism. Yeah. That up and to the right idea of what we think it's going to mean to follow Jesus. Um, I, I just think he, I mean, if you actually look at the life of Jesus, you're not going to see that anywhere. So, um, yeah, for me, it's been, um, yeah, finding him, finding him just as good, even better than I thought in the loss. And for me, that was, um, the loss of a marriage. Um, my, my divorce was final in February of 2020. And so um, that that is excruciating no matter what tradition you come from. Mm-hmm. But growing up in the church, there isn't a divorce anywhere in my family. Um, that's not a first that I wanted to be. And, um, you know, it just was nowhere in the plan of, of how I thought my life would go. And really the album, I was sure, was written in the middle of dealing with processing, uh, living with the grief of that loss. I, I, there's a lot that's written about grief and so much of it is looking back at it once you've kind of come through it. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just wasn't finding much that could capture the ache that I was feeling right in the middle before I felt like there was much resolution or, um, you know, that, that the, the bow had been sort of tied back on top that I'd been put back together. So I was sure it was my attempt to process real time what it was like to lose something that uh, I was sure I would never lose. And what did that say about me as a man? What did that say about God? Mm. Um, so that that's what the album's about. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And you're exactly right. I mean, many times if you hear a testimony or someone get up and speak, it many times is I was in a lot of pain, but now I'm not. Mm -hmm. And you're looking Mm -hmm. backwards and you wrote this in the midst of it all. Yeah. Yeah. I I always, I always, that's always a, 
kind of a flag for me, not necessarily a red flag, but when someone's always talking about the pain they used to have yeah. or the struggle they, they went through years ago, um, I think what that does is tells the listener who's actually in pain right now, uh, I, I, don't, I don't belong yeah. or I, there must be something uniquely broken about me. The trick is that I know that Jesus means to heal our hearts. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mean to leave us broken. So I want to have stories of years ago, things that I went through that I was healed from. But if I'm being honest presently, there's probably always something that he's wanting to heal in my heart right now. So yeah, I try to use that mm. really present kind of language of, um, of him healing my heart. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of back back to Revels, and now you've you've really stepped into a leader. I mean, a lot, I think when we chatted, when I was at the retreat, a lot of times you're on the worship team, you're leading worship, but someone else is leading the weekend. But when I was there, you were the guy leading, right? So mm -hmm. was so it's funny how like Christ, uh, you went through this, you're in this. And then now you're like, oh, and by the way, you're going to really step up. <laughs> yeah. The Lord has a sense of humor, doesn't yeah. he? <laughs> so what is, what has that been like just really stepping into, into this more the leader, you got this pain, this, this loss, has it, has it helped you in your leadership leading these people that are coming to this retreat? Mm. Um, what has some of that been like? Yeah. Well, um, I guess I would say the typical version of leadership, um, I, I feel as unqualified as ever mm. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now, the kind of leadership that Jesus talks about of the greatest among you must be the one who serves. Now that, that I can do mm. and that I've never been more prepared or never more set up for mm. in my life. So um, when I think about leadership uh, as having all the answers, or even knowing what to do next, um, I get pretty overwhelmed mm. day to day with what's in front of me. It's just not a role that I have much experience in or training in. Um, I didn't necessarily ask for this <laughs> <laughs> and, and yet here I am, but if I can see it as I, I'm the chief servant of the team that's entrusted to me right now, mm -hmm. uh, now that, that I can do. Mm. So yeah. that Jesus and I can do together. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it just depends on, on how I see that task that's in front of me. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just what, like you said, Christ and God, just sense of humor as you look at the the Bible, how many leaders <laughs> did he raise up that were completely unqualified, that yeah. lacked the confidence, but mm -hmm. did it anyways, and he gave them strength. So um, yeah, let's talk about this Revel Retreat. You call these soul care intensives. You have this yeah. ranch in the mountains of Colorado. You go out there, you're like 8,000 feet elevated. Can't, guys from the Midwest can't breathe very well. <laughs> uh, and soul care intensive. What is an experience like at Revel? Oh, yeah. Well, um, starting with the thing that our brains can really understand and wrap, wrap themselves around, you show up on a Thursday. <laughs> Uh, show up on a Thursday, we feed you and you show, or you leave on Sunday after we feed you for lunch. Uh, and in between we feed you some more and, uh, and we worship together and there's some teaching around some core ideas that the, the family and friends that have run together for well over a decade that, uh, I would call the rebel tribe, the rebel family ideas, things about God that we've tested figured out in our own lives and lived with, we'll, we'll teach a couple of those main principles, not from the standpoint of we've got this figured out and let us indoctrinate you into this program that we've now got dialed. But from a really, as I mentioned before, like really current and present, like where, where's this working for me in my life? Where's this not working for me in my life? So you'll get a lot of honesty from me, from our team. It's a very team-based approach. That's how we roll um, there'll be a bunch of worship, be some solitude, some time to yourself to, to just be with the Lord, think journal, walk, nap, um, some time in small groups and hopefully a lot of laughter along the way. So it's, I, I like to say it is, it's the hardest work you'll ever love. Mm. The work of getting honest with yourself, with God, with other people. And really what happens from there, we, we, 
it's funny after a decade of doing this professionally to stand in front of a room on a Thursday night and say, I have no idea what's about to happen. I mean, what other, <laughs> what other profession would that be? Okay. Where the guy, the folks in charge really do have no clue how this is about to go. I mean, we have some sense because we've seen God move in some ways that there are patterns too, but I mean, it's so unique. It's so individual for each person. Every time the way that he comes, all I know is that he's going to show up. Mm-hmm. So that's what I could promise the person who's, going, what would I get if I end up at that ranch out at a revel retreat in Colorado? You'd get an honest experience where you have a chance to, to come before God as you are and what he does from there. Uh, I'm not sure, but I could tell you that 135 retreats in, it's going to be good. Mm. So, yeah. No, I uh, totally agree. And you, you mentioned this, I think, at the retreat, that if God doesn't show up, you're just making a bunch of noise, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just clanging around and, you know, Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the great comfort and the terrifying, <laughs> like, anxiety part of, of leading these things is I know it's not up to me and I'm not in, I'm not in control. Like, I can't yeah. manufacture this. And if I try to manufacture it, it's going to be a terrific flop. So <laughs> <laughs> definitely what, what have you seen? I mean, the past decade, you've seen mm. a lot of things. You've seen God do a lot of things, impact a mm-hmm. lot of people's lives, but can you put into words just a couple of, uh, you know, one or two, what have you kind of just seen through, through this organization? Oh my goodness. Um, a couple of things I've seen, God's always moving towards us. He's always moving towards me, uh, no matter how, uh, I mean, I I think immediately, I think to the prodigal son, Mm -hmm. I think to the, to that prodigal father story of man had two sons. He ends up moving towards both of the sons. Both of the sons are lost. I mean, the, the prodigal son is typically the one seen as lost, but the older ones living at home in his father's house, but with zero intimacy, Mm -hmm. checking all the boxes, working hard, but you haven't given me a goat shaking his fist Mm -hmm. at the father. So I came, came back to that to say the father's moving towards all of us, no matter where we are, no matter how much we um, have good motives or terrible motives. Mm -hmm. (laughs) See, see the younger son coming home just because he's hungry, not because he wants to repair relationship with his dad and the father's still moving towards him. Oh, that's me so many times. Mm -hmm. I just, I have a need. And so I, I run home to God, but not necessarily because I want him. So good motives, bad motives, dutiful, uh, just kind of checking the boxes. He's moving towards all of us. That's the thing that jumps out to me first. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. You have a very interesting place at the ranch called the Hobbit hole, right? <laughs> so that, yeah. was, that was one thing uh, we, we got to visit in the Hobbit hole, which is just probably the most unique place that I've been inside of. So you're, mm. you're jam packing there, but can you, can you give us, you know, you don't have to tell us the whole story behind it, but um, give us a little flavor of like, what was the inspiration behind that, the Hobbit hole? Um, and yeah. yeah, what is that like? Sure. Well, so just to paint a bit of a picture, uh, five foot round door uh, in the side of a mountain. And behind that door is, um, is a room that we affectionately call our own underground pub, uh, that could fit. It was built to fit about 20 people. And now, uh, every retreat, we pack about 50 folks in there. So, um, it, it came about as, um, as a, just kind of a dream and idea. We felt like God said, I, I want a place. I want a place where you guys, you as a family come to celebrate the things that I've done, to tell stories, to remember my faithfulness, to remember what I've done and to dream about what I'm yet to do. I mean, like the sense of um, going out to a bar or something after your team wins a football game, it, it, that sort of uh, create an amazing place that is going to just stop people in their tracks and the whole point is going to be to remember the faithfulness of God and dream about what he's yet to do. So we're in Colorado. Um, culturally, having a beer or a whiskey is not a big deal where we are. I realize that's not the case everywhere in the United <laughs> States, in, in the world of Christianity. But for us to sit and tell stories about what God's done, mm-hmm. enjoying uh, a great beer or a glass of scotch or something, um, 
It, that's not why the Hobbit hole was built. The Hobbit hole was built to remember the faithfulness of God. It just so happens that at times that also includes a great glass of something tasty. <laughs> Yes, it's definitely, uh, again, one of those unique places, an awesome experience uh, to share. Mm. And you have lined up bottles around uh, <laughs> around the top, and, you, and you, there's stories on these bottles yeah. of what God has done. Yeah. So again, it's yeah. just that celebration, that remembering of what he's doing and what he is going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a big journal. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like our, our way of... Um, keeping a record of what God's done. So it, written in Sharpie on the outside of all these bottles is is what Brett's referring to there. And yeah, uh, one for every retreat. So there's over 130 of those bottles around the uh, around the riddling racks in the yeah. Hobbit hole there. Yeah. I know one of the things you, I think it's, I don't know if it's Revel's motto, but you talk about awakening hope in mm -hmm. people. And mm -hmm. then that's, that's something very unique. And you also talk about home, like these retreats are actually in a home. Yeah. So typically a retreat you would go, maybe there's some cabins or a, a conference center, something like that, yeah. but this is literally in someone's home. So can you just dive into that awakening hope that, what is that meaning for mm -hmm. you? And then that word home. Yeah. Well, awakening hope. I mean, I think, I'm not sure that you'd find someone who'd say, I don't want more of that. Yeah. Actually, you know, I'm good on, on hope. Uh, the, theological backgrounds all across the board, but I think all of us is no theology at all. No, no idea of, of God or, or um, the, the most secular person you'd find out there. The idea of awakening hope is something that I think universally pulls at the human heart because I don't know, maybe it's just me, but as I look around, this life is hard. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it, it wears, it wears on our hearts. It, um, so easily sucks the joy from us. And, and Jesus said, you'll have trouble. So it's not that you and I are doing something wrong that we feel that way, but, um, yeah. So we want the ranch. We want revel to be a place where travelers on the journey, could stop in for a weekend, whether it's once a year, once a lifetime, uh, whatever it might be as a place that they could come and have hope reawakened in their hearts. And, and we think the, the best place to do that is not a conference center. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we think the best place to do that is in a home. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's what the belonging, the safety, the security of being welcomed into whatever version of home for the, the listeners, the, the viewers out there. I know that home isn't always a place of tremendous safety in our stories, but whatever it is that picture of the home where you're welcomed as you are, you can put your feet on the coffee table. There's going to be good food served. There's going to be good conversation. And you can, you can let down that mask that maybe we wear as we walk around, do business, do life outside of, outside of the walls of home where we're safe and known just as we are. So that that's why it's a house and not a conference center. Mm. No, I love that. Uh, and it's exactly what you get. Come as you are feasting. The food is amazing. And I want to ask you like, what does home look like to you? Is it at the rebel, mm. uh, you know, uh, ranch in these homes? But like, if, if I were to ask you when you are completely at home, yeah, what, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means I can say what I'm thinking without too much pre-planned strategy. Uh, I, I'm a process it until it's exactly how I want it in my head kind of guy to make sure that I'm always understood, to make sure I'm never uh, misjudged um, or seen in a light that I don't want to be seen in. So I kind of overmanage. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, home for me is I can let down that manager side of me and just be myself. Uh, I, I don't need to be um, consumed as a resource as far as what I can provide in a certain situation. I mean, again, from the time I was 14, I've been in front of rooms, leading worship, speaking and teaching. Mm. And the idea of Adam Paulson as a resource to be consumed. Um, I, I've lived with that persona for a lot of years. Mm. And home is a place where I'm not a resource. Mm. I'm just... I'm just a, a beloved son, a beloved friend. Um, and 
I get, I'm the same on the inside as I am on the outside. So that, that integrity of same on the outside as on the inside, that's, that's who I am at home. I'm, I'm not putting on a show for anyone. I just am who I am. I'm, I'm loved as a son and that's it. Come as you are. Yeah, put your exactly. The, put your feet on the coffee table. Exactly. That's a good conversation. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, back, back to Revel. I know this is sort of year. I mean, you've, you've taken a step into more leadership, but mm -hmm. what's the, what's the future look like? You guys have been at this for 13 years now. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you guys see? Do you guys still see just doing more, more retreats like this, expanding, expanding a little bit? Like what, what does yeah. the future look like for Revel? Yeah. Good question. I mean, I think we'll always do what we've done to this point, which is what we call revel retreats. And that's what we've been talking about. Um, watching God move the way that he does. I just, uh, when that gets old, I'll stop doing what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and I haven't, I haven't seen any inkling of that yet, but, um, I would love for us to build, um, a revel in as we call it uh, a place that would house people, um, I don't know what room you stayed in when you were at the ranch, but uh, while I believe the accommodations are awesome, uh, at the same time, you're in a bunk bed, probably. You're sleeping in a room with four to six other people. You're sharing a bathroom with folks, and mm -hmm. and that's great. Um, and I think there's a clientele and a type of person, a type of retreat that we'll be able to offer in the future that has a private bedroom mm -hmm. and a private bathroom attached to it. I'd love to for Revel to get into marriage retreats where a husband and wife could come together, uh, actually sleep in the same bed mm -hmm. and, and use a private bathroom. Uh, so I envision a space that would sleep 40 in that kind of, a uh, a manner. Um, I'd love for us to get into doing more family type events. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that we're doing quite a bit these days is what we call host retreats. So we host other organizations, other partners, whether it's church groups or no other nonprofits, um, even folks that sec secular groups, mm -hmm. um, and we'll provide our chef, we'll provide a host, we'll provide a small team of Revel staff to help serve that weekend from behind the scenes and just empower other organizations to do what's in their hearts to do. So that that's really energizing us as a team right now, getting to watch other people hit home runs mm. in the kingdom. And, you know, we're not called to everything as Revel. We're, we're called to a particular lane and we want to support so many other people who are called to other lanes of the yeah. kingdom. And this is one way that we get to do that. Mm. It's amazing. Guys, go check out their website. It's uh, wearevel.org, W-E-Revel, R-E-V-E-L.org. We're going to put that in our show notes on our uh, YouTube channel as well. So mm. check that out. Adam, it's been awesome, man. So thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I always like thanks, to end every uh, podcast, with, which is a few fire round questions. So I got, <laughs> I got a couple for you today. So sure. first thing that comes to your mind. All right. Uh, who is your, so like, Again, guys, you got to go check out Adam's album. Uh, I listen to mm. on Spotify, but where's the best place? Where, where would you suggest someone listen to your album? I oh I'm sure. Yeah, I mean Spotify, a Apple Music, wherever you listen to music, it should be there. Uh, I initially launched it on Bandcamp mm -hmm. because that's the place that gives artists the best return, uh, gotcha. the best share yeah. of uh, of what people pay for the record. So if you wanted to buy it, that's a great place to do it. But iTunes and, and Spotify are great places as well. Awesome. Sounds good. So check out Adam Paulson on those. Uh, all right. Number one, who is your inspirational musical artists? Like who, mm. who inspires you? Oh, good question. Uh, this might be slightly unexpected. Um, but right now I would have to say David Ramirez. Mm. Okay. David Ramirez. Yeah. Sounds good. He grew up in the church. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't call his music Christian necessarily right now, but he's about as honest as they come. And I just, that uh, that really fires me up right now to listen to people writing honest songs. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So I'm gonna check that out too. All right, number uh, two. Is there any scripture that like at this season that you're hold, mm. you hold dear to? Goodness, yeah, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, a couple things that come to mind right away. Now I mentioned that Luke 15 earlier that that prodigal father mm -hmm. story. 
Um, I think that the first line that Jesus gives us in the prodigal son is what I walk around with in my head a lot these days. A man had two sons. Mm. Just even the start of that, I can already picture all of what comes after it. So I yeah. think um, a man had two sons. It, it, it puts my eyes on the father. And I remember how he moves towards both of those lost kids. Mm -hmm. And no, regardless of where I am on a given day, a man had two sons, puts me right back, like face to face with that father. So there's one, I mean, uh, I've been spending a lot of time in Romans five mm -hmm. these days, trying to memorize one through 11. Um, yeah. Just the idea that while we were still sinners, like while we had nothing to offer mm -hmm. him, he died for us. Mm -hmm. And that, that, um, yeah, I, I could go on and on, no, but Romans good. five, one, one through 11. That's good. All right. All right. Last one. So I talked to a lot of business leaders or people that are going out for success. So I want to ask you this, mm. this might be a deeper question for you, but so what does success look like for Adam Paulson? Uh, good question. <laughs> um, yeah, it might not be the, a typical answer, but for me, the goal every day is to be the same on the outside as I am on the inside. Mm. In other words, the extent to which I put on a front, put on a mask, manage or control life around me to have some sort of approval. Um, I just want to see the distance between the face I present to the world and the face that God knows is true on the inside of me. I, I want to see that distance between those two guys clothes that I'd be more my true self more and more every day. So, um, I, the more I can live just in this moment and in eternity, uh, not in the future, because that for me is going to be fear or anxiety over what's, and not in the past, that probably for me is going to be regret or shame or whatever, but in the present moment and in eternity. Mm. So there, there's a couple of versions for me of what yeah. success looks like mm. on a daily basis. I love that. Thank you so much, Adam, being on the yeah. Progress podcast. It's been an honor, man. Thanks for having me on, Brett. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Check out the website, guys. Go check out Revel. You got to get to a retreat. And uh, this is a wrap with Adam Polson. God bless awesome. you, brother. Thanks. Thank you. You too. Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below. And I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.